and we're recording. Hello dear, thank you for coming on. No problem. How are you, you alright? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, really good, thank you. I'm actually having like a bit of a lazy day. I hate, I actually hate myself when I work from the sofa, but today is one of those days. Yeah, I know what you mean. Sometimes when you work from home, it really is quite difficult, isn't it? Because you feel like you're lazy even though you're still at work. Yeah, and like, I really try not to. I really try and work in my office. Yeah. But today it's just been like, I'm just like, oh, no, I need comfort. Definitely. Um, so for people that don't know you, can you give us... Oh, magpie, sorry. Um, can you... Oh, two magpies, sorry. I salute mm -hmm. every magpie. Can you oh, I'm the same. Hello. Introduce yourself. Yeah, so I'm Abby. So Abby G Fitness on Instagram, um, and basically um, I opened up about my binge eating disorder in March 2020 before lockdown happened, and literally been in a recovery process. And I would say now that I'm finally recovered from binge eating, and it's like the best feeling ever. Like you know when you say I'm in recovery, but now I actually feel like I can say I'm recovered. And it's so nice. So yeah, so that I think people know me for always chatting about binge eating and my struggles and how I've overcome it and things like that. I've had obviously bumps along the way as well, if you see on it on my Instagram. Of course. So and you've got a hefty amount of followers. Has that grown mostly in the past year since you spoke about it? Or is that Yeah, definitely. It's definitely grown since speaking up. I think I don't think I realised the because when I spoke up about my binge eating, I honestly thought, oh, no one's going to get it. No one's going to understand. I thought um, I was a weirdo because, like, who else does this? Um, but then when I spoke up about it, I didn't realise the amount of people that struggle with it. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah. Can you talk to me about your binge eating disorder? So, like, how it started? Um, yeah, so... I think I think um, for me it really did stem from like restricting myself. Um, I I feel like I struggled I struggled with it for about five years, and I think when I was about eighteen, I was one of them girls that went on the no carb diet or whatever, and I got really really small and like obviously I was like oh I like this it's great, and I remember I never forget the time where my brother got really worried about me because I lost quite a lot of weight and then he was like prove to me that you ain't got a problem and have pizza with me tonight and I was like oh fine fine I will and I'm not lying after that pizza because I hadn't allowed myself to have that for so long that was when it all started literally that that time I had that one slice and I thought oh my god I can't eat this tomorrow I, I'm back on my restricting tomorrow so I need to and it was like the weirdest experience ever and it just start and then obviously because I ate so much food that day I was like I can't eat anything tomorrow and then it then that's literally how it starts and then you get a taste for something and then you're like oh I can eat this because it's the weekend so I'm gonna eat every single thing in the entire kitchen now because by Monday I have to go back to being strict again and it's just over and over and over again it's crazy what are the thoughts going through your head during that during that time I know you touched a little bit on like the I think it's like well, nothing go on sorry what was that you broke up a little bit I was just saying that like, you touched a little bit on like the whole like start Monday thing but like when 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 you're about to go into a binge what are those processes when I'm about to um I would say like it's it's really hard because like you get these urges and it's like they are so hard to control like they get so loud in your brain and I think sometimes it, it really does take time to learn how to manage them urges because when you get let go of that urge it's so hard to control because when you're binging you're so out of control so it's like it's like when you're eating it's like you're not even aware of what you're eating and it's like someone else is controlling your hands and putting the food in your mouth you don't want to be doing it but in the moment you're just you're so like so focused on getting as much food in and it, it's really weird as well because it's like you don't want to regret the binge like once you start binging you don't want to regret it not being big enough because it's like well I can't eat this again so it's very odd very odd concept but 
and then but this the afterwards is that when you get back to reality i think getting back to reality is it's like basically you do completely ignore about being full like you literally just try and shove as much in as you can and then when it gets to the point where your body is literally like look i cannot eat anymore and then that's when all the guilt starts and you just feel so guilty and like, it's like um i can't even describe how you feel after a binge like you literally feel so awful like just un unbelievably awful and then that's when you think oh i need to punish myself now i need to do so much cardio now i need to you know restrict i need to skip breakfast lunch only have salads for dinner and then yeah it's horrible you feel better when you restrict for that day but then a, a few days again your body will start telling you again oh well you've restricted so now you crave food again so yeah it is really hard how long were you in that cycle for um so i was in that cycle for about five years on and off yeah oh, it would mainly be for me on weekends for some reason i saw saw weekends as like a way to go all out i don't know like it was so i think my habit and mindset was like you work Monday to Friday and then party on the weekend. And that was like how I felt about food. Okay. So you were really like, you were really restrictive during the week. Came to the yeah. weekend, it was like your body just went flipping out. Absolutely was, mental. Yeah. Or it would be like, say if I was invited for dinner on a Thursday, that would be it Thursday, Monday. Like, do you know what I mean? I wouldn't, it would be like, if I went, away on a Tuesday and I ate something bad that'd be it till the following Monday it was always start again on Monday I would never think oh well I'll, all right like I've overeaten today we'll start again tomorrow it was well start again Monday now even yeah. if it was Tuesday did you get diagnosed by the doctor or how did you get out of this um so I didn't actually get diagnosed by the doctor because again like I was so ashamed to speak out at the time. Like I didn't know I had a problem in a way. Like I didn't think it was a real thing because I don't think it's spoken about a lot. Like obviously other eating disorders are. So I thought, well, no one's gonna, no doctor's gonna really listen to me. They're probably just gonna think I'm greedy or they're probably just gonna tell me to stop eating. And because I physically don't look like I've got a problem as well, I just didn't think the doctor would take me serious. And I didn't really know how to get help at the time, but. I knew I had a problem because I just thought the things that I was doing, I was thinking this is not normal, like, the fit, like hiding food, eating alone, being having so much anxiety if someone caught me eating. I would like eat food out of the bin to try to stop myself from, from eating it. All these sort of things. And I'm thinking this ain't, this ain't normal. Like this is not right. Like something is not right because I don't feel like I'm in my body when I'm doing it. So that was when because I had a um, Shannon as my coach at the time but I completely ignored that I completely didn't listen to what she was telling me to eat more and stuff like that I completely done my own thing I don't really know I, obviously you're a coach as well but I, I just wasn't honest with her and I think that's the number one key is when you have a coach is to be honest with them so say if I binge one night I wouldn't tell I wouldn't tell my like Shannon my coach and then she obviously she can't help if she doesn't know what's going on so in the end, I was like, you know what, I need to tell her about it. And then that was when it all started, like my, my recovery and everything. I told my mum, she was really supportive. And, and I yeah. guess your coach as well, like if I'm guessing like your coach is more like fitness led, right? So like if you're not getting results that you want in terms of like whether that's body comp or, or whatever, the coach is like, fuck me, like I'm doing everything I can here, mate. And I don't understand why it's not working for you yeah exactly like i think you have to be so honest with your coach and if you're struggling like they really will help you it's just not like solving the like trying to solve why it's happening and obviously for me it was really restricting like and skipping meals and things like that um you, so, were you tracking while you were binging as well like not tracking the binge but monday to friday were you you know what no that's the fit weirdest thing a lot of people say that but i never really knew about tracking at all before like i track now and i think that's why i'm never, I'm never triggered by tracking because i didn't track before and if i'm honest with you i really didn't actually have a lot of knowledge about food like because often as well i used to binge on like healthier food 
which is weird for some people as well. But I would think like, oh, because it's an apple, I can have 10. But I can't have a, tr I can't have a biscuit because that's a biscuit, but I can have 10 apples. But when you really like the calorie difference is like, well, I could have just had the biscuit, but I had no, I had no like knowledge. Yeah, do you feel like you were trying to curb the cravings by having the apple? So like yeah, the body, hundred percent. Body wanted the fucking biscuit, yet you're yeah. like, whereas you're like, hundred percent. Oh, I'll, I'll eat an apple, and then that still doesn't curb. Yeah, me. it's so weird because it's like I really want that biscuit, but I have, it, it is, if, if it was Monday to Friday, it'll be like I really want like a biscuit or whatever it was. But there was an apple, I would choose the apple. But then I would still really want the biscuit, but I wouldn't let myself have it. But it's like, oh, because it's an apple, that apples don't have calories in, so it's fine. But then I would literally be wanting that apple from Wednesday. It's like, oh, I can have it on Saturday. But then because it was Saturday, I would have the whole packet of biscuits. It's like, if I literally just let myself that one biscuit every day, it would have caused me so much less harm than if I literally didn't have it and then binged on a whole packet at the weekend. And how physically did was that in your body so can we touch on like digestion skin that stuff but yeah. also how you looked as well I think that is also important to touch on as much as I don't know on my how I view things and this is why when I won't lie when I first came across because I did that live for you in the Facebook group tonight when you yeah. came across your instagram i was like oh my god this is going to trigger me so much because there were so much bikinis but as i've sort of like worked on my mindset and actually realized sort of what's important to me like i want to look fucking good as well and yeah like, so i think i believe it's still important to sort of like touch on that side of things because it's completely like since recovery it's completely transformed you hasn't it yeah definitely i think before when i when i am um, so i've been on a major major journey like because in my recovery i did really have a massive wobble like bad wobble um when i st started recovery in my eyes i was a lot bigger than what i am now but i didn't look at i didn't look bad on it if someone else saw me do you know what i mean no one knew that i had a problem um i was just known as a thick girl at the gym that's all I got thought that's what, what I was um but I myself like obviously I struggled with the body dysmorphia so I just saw myself as fat basically that's what my my mirror was telling me and because of binging like if I talk about the digestion like my stomach was so sore so inflamed like I used to get so puffy like my my face would get puffed up my arms would be so like puffy and it's because like all the toxins because I would like eat such a huge amount in, in one sitting the f I think my body was like oh my god what we're we gonna do with all this food so it would just leave me so puffy and yeah swollen my ankles would swell up and it was just so uncomfortable like and my stomach like I'd have such bad stomach pains get headaches yeah not very nice at all okay so talk to me then like from the time that you were like, okay, I need to change, you decided to speak out to your coach, right? Yeah. About how your whole life changed. What was like from day one, what was the first thing you and your coach looked at? I think what it was that helped me so much is, is um, planning a structure structure and reset to me like before I had no structure and I had no routine especially on the weekends so when I didn't have routine and structure I, it's just like you, you're not in control I wasn't in control of what was going on but when I set myself a decent structure a meal plan like I like wrote out a meal plan that well, all the foods I enjoy I, I put like because I remember um sh when I had the first call with with my coach and she was like, so what food do you want? Like, what food is going to help? And I said, oh, I just, I just really want avocado on toast. And because it was bread and avocado with the fat, I, I thought I couldn't have it. And she was like, yes, you can. Like, you can have avocado on toast. And I was like, really? But I can have avocado on toast? And she was like, yes. And I was like, and I really want a yogurt bowl of an evening with like, I think at the time it was like cereal in it or something. But because it was cereal, I labelled that as bad still. And she's like, you, you can have that. And she sort of designed like a, a meal plan for me. Um, and I was like, I cannot believe I can actually eat the food I enjoy every day and enough food. 
And then once once I started enjoying the food every day, I had no desire to binge because I was like, but I'm eating what I enjoy every day, so I don't feel the need to. And then like the more it went on, I was like, well, now I can have a bit of peanut butter, like because you have to like start trusting yourself with these certain foods. Some foods are really triggering, so you have to like, kind of learn to trust yourself that you can have them so like i would often buy like single serving sizes of things and also um another thing that really helped me was allowing myself to have pizza every weekend i used to do i've done that every weekend for a whole year because i used to never let myself have a certain pizza dominoes papa john's and then as soon as i had that i used to binge but when i just allowed myself that every week mm-hmm. and i realized it was okay I just yeah then it kind of just got better and better with my relationship with food but then unfortunately um I recovered from binging and I, like it was great and then I went back to work because it was lockdown and I just got completely triggered by it I was like oh my god I don't want to go back to how I used to look not that I looked bad anyway but in my head I did um I'm so worried about binging again because I'm going to go back to work and go back to my old routine and it kind of reminded me of my old habits of like binging and then going to work on Monday over exercising. I completely took a 360 and started restricting again like really really bad like and not having the binge in but just getting like. That, yeah I went back to the gym like 10 weeks ago now and I had um one of the personal trainers in there who used to teach me calisthenics um adonis he's absolutely incredible um he's a good friend of mine as well and i had a meeting with him before and i said to him exactly that i said this gym as a personal trainer this gym holds so many toxic memories like if Mm. i picture it i it's like i can see the gym floor and then all of these memories sort of like above it do you know what I mean? Yeah. Visually, I could see it. And it's like, my ex started working there as a barber. Like from the, So I was like, my whole past is in this building. Yeah. While I'm fine with the past, like that's fine. What I'm not yeah. fine with is the uncertainty of whether my subconscious will start restricting or start doing 50,000 burpees again. And I was so scared about it. And he said to me, he was like, but Chloe, you have done so much work, inner work, that is not you anymore. Like, Mm. and genuine, just hearing that helped me so much. And I wonder if you were able to heal from binge eating in terms of the food stuff, but do you think that maybe there was some sort of like mindset in terms of like, detaching yourself from it by the time you went back to work and then that triggered you when you went back to work it was like okay this is where I need to work on now yeah 100 percent. I think when I went back to work like I don't work there anymore but when I went back there for the first time it's like something that I learned about your brain like pattern matching so it was pattern matching what I was doing before and I got told like you need to make a new pattern and a new memory with your new mindset and your new you're, you're you're a different person so you need to make a new memory so that's what I was really really trying to do but at the same time I think I kind of just got in denial in a way like I think when you struggle with food and stuff like that you do get very in denial and very you you don't see it because it's very weird because I struggle with body dysmorphia and when I was getting smaller because I got extremely small, um, I couldn't see myself for who I was. I couldn't see it. Like so, when I was looking in the mirror, I still saw myself how I looked when I used to binge. I could not see how small I got, even though people around me were going blimey, like what? Because obviously, I went from being thicker. I went back to the gym, and I all of a sudden was nothing. So everyone in the gym, all the members were like, "Bloody hell, what happened to you?" And I was getting all these comments like what the hell happened to you what do you know what I mean it was really triggering I was like oh my god like and then I was like I don't I was just a mess basically and then um one day I just I really just saw myself for who I was and I was like oh my god like I've got so small I've lost all my muscle I'm tired obviously I lost my period too I was doing all these hit sessions because when it was locked down I was doing hit sessions and I think that really mucked up mucked up my over exercising as well the obsession with it um and then yeah then I started that reverse diet and I think that's when I started speaking to you and I was increasing my food and I remember you saying oh you can definitely eat more than 2,000 at that time I was petrified I was like no 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 
but now I'm like re- in a really good place, so that's really good. So d- tell me about um, so were you tracking before this? No, so again, I wasn't. So I was still following a meal plan right. with my coach, but I w- again I went against what she was saying, which I've done it again. Like so, this is the thing. Like you need to learn from your mistakes. So obviously, I clearly had to learn a bit more but I remember she saw me in real life and she was like Abby like we need to increase your food but at the time I was like so in denial and I was like no no I don't want to increase my food because I think I got fixated on being so small and having abs and stuff like that um like you're the unicorn right like eating more food isn't going to be the answer for me yeah that was it like and I was like I can't like I don't know I was just so I think once I lost the weight from from binge eating I was then so fearful of weight gain. Like I've become so, so fearful of weight gain. And I think that's saying it doesn't really get spoke about because of judgment or something. Because obviously weight gain isn't a bad thing. But when you struggle with the fear of weight gain, it takes over your life so much. I don't know if you've ever struggled with that as well. Yeah, that's, yeah, 100%. I was tiny. And that's, I think, so I had amenorrhea for like, oh God, like two and a half years, make, and like, I'd still say I'm in recovery like as soon as I'm a little bit stressed my period will go like mm-hmm. I yeah a hundred percent that I the reason why it took me so long to actually embrace recovery was because I was so scared of weight gain yeah I think that's what stops so many people from like doing what they're doing even if it is binge eating I think that it could stem from the fact that they're so feared of weight gain this is crazy it is mentally crazy how having that a fear can really impact you so much so i do just want to quickly say if you are triggered by tracking um the conversation that we're about to go into is like a bit more about how abby did like introduce tracking so if you're triggered and you're trying to step away from tracking then please sort of like switch off and skip or <laughs> um i just don't want to trigger anyone but yeah so you were following a meal plan and then yeah started tracking right yeah so it's yeah so a lot people think that my journey like obviously i that's why i always say like everything every single person recovers differently and say like some people are triggered by tracking me personally it really has helped me and it and people probably think oh how can that help you because if you have an ed that's what they say like don't track but it it really did help me i realized i can eat and eat what i enjoy and stuff like that but yeah i was doing a meal plan um but then when my coach actually because she actually saw me in real life because I think you can hide quite a lot when you're on social media, but she saw me in the in the real life, and I think she was just a little bit worried. She was like, "Wow, like you really have lost a lot of weight," and she was like, "Look, we're gonna do a reverse diet." And at the time, I had no clue what that meant. She was like, well, "We're gonna increase your food," because I I was honest with her again. I had to be honest. I was like, "Look, I've been restricting because I was scared about going back to work." So she said, obviously, your body's got used to the low amount of calories, so we're going to have to reverse diet and eat more, get stronger, and things like that. First, and she was like, I remember she set a milestone of, right, we're going to get you to 2,000 calories. Oh, my days. I was, actually, I was like, absolutely not. Like, no way. Because I think at the time, although I wasn't tracking, I was probably eating about 1,400, 1,400. 1500 so it weren't a lot for me and it especially with what I was doing with the hip training and the walking and when you really do think oh uh, less is better and more exercise is better like you do but what I was doing yeah yeah I was definitely not. Um, so she said, look, we're going to take away the, the, the cardio. And I was absolutely petrified of that as well. And we're going to increase your food every week. Um, and that was when I sort of started getting into the tracking because I wanted to see what foods I could have. And like, obviously, like I eat pretty much the same every day just because it really works for me. And I just like my food. I like, I like my staples. And I kind of just wanted to learn like about how many grams more I would need to feel better and I don't know, so I would kind of use the the app to increase my oats and increase the rice, increase this, and then yeah, the more I got into that into the tracking, I realised that it wasn't triggering for me. It was just helpful. It was like a tool just to know that I was eating enough and I was fueling my body properly. And then yeah, and then because she was like, every time I would check in with her, she's like, right, well, well, I'm adding another hundred calories. So 
I was like, okay, so where can I add that in? So I was like, oh, I can have some more peanut butter. And I cut, yeah, so it was like a tool. It didn't really trigger me. And then now, I'm at a point now where I'm really happy with what I'm eating. So now, I don't really track every day because I do eat very similar, but it helps me when on social occasions and things like that because I know that I've got a lot of food to eat now. So all I have to do is just take a meal out and replace it. So... Yeah, it's never really been an issue for me. What about what about you and your like tracking for you? Do you know what love hate? So it track it the same similar. So I found tracking when I was eating about a thousand calories a day. I went on a nutrition course and found out about tracking and it literally changed my life. I was very um like sort of like very big bollocks they needed someone to be like okay like can some, we use someone as like a like a model like a dummy and I was like yeah yeah sure I'll do it because I miss health and uh they put in they started like worked out how many calories I should eat and then they were like okay what's like a typical day for you and I like put it I like said to them and they were like is that really what you eat and I was like yeah and they were like you're eating like a thousand calories a day and they worked out that I should be on a cut like 1,800 or whatever. I can't really remember. And it, it did scare me. But if anything, it was like such a relief because it was like, oh my God, I get, really? I get, and I really trusted these yeah. people. I was like, I get to eat all of this. Wow. So I, yeah. I actually just jumped straight up. Um, and yeah. I was thicker to start with, but then eventually it labeled. But my problem was is because I got comfortable with where I was. So I was like, okay, I don't mind looking like this. That I then became so obsessed with only ever hitting that particular number. Yeah. And then yeah. I did, like if I wanted to, and then I saw, thought, okay, well, I look all right, but I could be better. So then I started to try to go a little bit lower. And then, mm, I start, so. yeah. And then I just became so, so obsessed with it. But mm. then, in recovery, um, I worked with Rena McGregor and she gave me a meal plan and I followed that. And then I wanted to sort of like lean away from that meal plan. And I thought, oh, I'll just rant. And then sort of like just started tracking sort of maybe like once a week uh, just to check that I was eating enough and mm -hmm. like sort of interested. And then it just sort of like fizzled out, like the tracking. Side. Yeah. I just... I yeah. just got fizzled and I think as I got to know myself a bit better as I sort of released those old habits and like that obsession of being tiny and just sort of like embraced me a little bit more that sort of fizzled out uh I have this year when so like last month I had a really weird cycle and I did download it again just to see what I was eating and where I was at and I actually feel really like just a bit neutral <laughs> with it do you know what I mean and like since going back training I have, I don't, I don't want to become someone that tracks again. And I don't want to become someone that's like so into the gym, but I don't like, it's on my phone and I don't really feel anything. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Before I think I would have attached so much emotion to it and I would have been yeah. like, Oh my God, I need to track. Whereas now it's just like, Oh, it's there. And like, especially like if I've had a hard training session and then the next day I feel like crap that's when I'll probably go to track because I'm like, well, what did I even eat yesterday? And some days, yeah. if, I'm, if I have a big training session and then I have a busy day at work and then I track and I'm like, for God's sake, do you want to keep your period or not? And like that, yeah, yeah. I can just sort of use it as a way to, because I do, like I can forget to eat and I can, I'm like the sort of person that if I'm, if I'm in something, I'm in something and, and I- 100%, yeah. So I think with the tracking, it is really just a tool that is it like it's trying to not let that consume you and have that it's about controlling the app and not letting the app control you it's literally just a tool to make sure you're well for me feel like food is fuel and it's enjoyment and everything like that and for me tracking is is just making sure that i'm fueling my body enough for my health and everything because like you say like if you don't eat enough and you train too much like you can lose your period and things like that so i think that's why it's not triggering for me because i'm i'm not striving to eat less i want to eat more yeah. and it's weird now because it's like i was so fearful of weight gain like absolutely control my whole life my whole thoughts if you struggle with the fear of weight gain it, it food is on your mind all day every day you're thinking of food 24 7 you're thinking about 
you think about everything. You think about if certain food will bloat you. You think about um, if someone makes you a coffee at Costa and they put too much milk in it, you have an anxiety attack. Absolutely controls your life. Um, but now it's so weird that I don't, I'm fearful of losing weight now. So I don't want to lose my muscle. Like, it's so weird. It's, and it's like, I, I didn't want this. Like, I didn't want to gain weight. And now I have. It's crazy how I'm, I'm at, like, it's, when you have that fear, but then you go past it and you actually do gain weight, which is the biggest fear in the whole entire world. When you actually do it, you, re you realise how, how great it is. Don't you, don't you think? Yeah, definitely. But I also think like what, how much of a life that you've got back now. Now I'm, I had to take that break from tracking. I had to release it so I could just prove to myself that nothing bad was going to happen. And I think it's even now like, it's oh, there's a helicopter outside um like there's so much life that I've got back because mm. I took that break and I feel like I needed and like I feel like similar for you because you were able to work through the fact that starving yourself and being tiny 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 isn't the answer no. but happiness comes from within and I think making yeah. peace with that has like is just completely life-changing yeah I think that as well, that's what I always say as well, like the same as you, is not, when you realise nothing bad happens, because I also used to have a lot of fear foods. So like, for instance, very, even very recently, I think now, I think I'm becoming the best with my relationship with food as of recent. Um, cause I, I'm trying things that I haven't tried in years because I'd be scared about binging on them. But now I haven't got that anymore. I'm like, well, I can have them. Um, so like for instance things like pasta like I would I would worry so much that it wouldn't digest well for me and I'd blow and things like that and when you think about it it's like what what do you actually think is going to happen if you have pasta like what actually do you think is going to happen because nothing will <laughs> like nothing will so it's like just try it and what is the worst that's going to happen and when you actually have it you're like oh right okay nothing happened and then you realise nothing happens and that's the, and then your life starts because you're not constantly thinking about oh my god I can't have pasta I can't have this it's just yeah it's good. you have to face the fear otherwise you're never gonna you're just gonna be thinking about it all the time 100%. so you said that you were doing loads of hit before you were in that binge restrict cycle um yeah um now how is your life different yeah so I got consumed with hit that that was my big I would say like as well as well as the relationship with food getting away from the excessive amounts of cardio I used to do like it's so hard and obviously you can relate to that as well like you think if you don't because you had the fear of weight gain it's like if you don't do this hits workout I'm going to gain weight and mentally it's the most hardest thing in the world to just sit uncomfortably and not do the amount I was doing but when I was doing the hit training because I was doing hit about five times a week I was so exhausted, like so exhausted, literally. And obviously I wasn't eating enough and either energy. And I kind of just didn't blame the hit. I just thought, I just, I don't know. You just don't do it. You just think, oh, I've got to do it. And you don't feel, you feel like more of a, it's like more of an accomplishment because it's like, oh, I feel, I feel tired because of the hit, but really no, it's your body telling you that you need to have a break. But I think the fear is, is when you think about it, it's like, when you think about changing it's like in your life right now are you happy because if not then what's more like it's you need to change in order to change and I think if you're uncomfortable right now then what what's more comfortable than I'm trying to think of what I'm trying to I mean, yeah. say like if you feel so uncomfortable right now then being uncomfortable will be more comfortable. So that's what I had to like to think to myself. I'm not happy right now. So what is the worst that's going to happen if I'm currently not happy? So I remember when I was doing all that hit, I was like, well, I need to reset. I just need to reset my life because I'm clearly not doing what, I'm, what I want to be doing. I'm clearly not where I want to be. So what's the worst that can happen if I start saying no today? So I literally just thought, right, I'm going to go from, I'm going to do two hits this week. Honestly, nothing bad happened. I started doing the strength training because I was really into strength training before lockdown. And obviously the gyms got taken, taken away. And then I got into running because I didn't know what I was what to do when the gym was shut. So I got into running and here. And that's when the obsession with doing more cardio 
come about. Um, but then I got back into strength training again, which is what I generally love. Um, but I still, because when I used to struggle with binge eating, I would do weight training and a load of cardio on top. So I would still do way too much. But now I just do strength training and steps, basically. I don't do any hit cardio. I do, I'm not against cardio, but it's like the feeling that you need to do it, which I find a problem. Like you, you feel like you have to in order to feel accomplished, yeah. which isn't true at all. You're in split now then? Uh, at the moment, I'm, I train five days a week. Um, at the moment, I'm actually um, on a leg development program, so I'm trying to grow my legs because I lost so much muscle from restricting and doing so much here that it really, like, completely, I lost my bum, I lost everything. So now I'm trying to build up my muscle again. So, yeah, I'm doing a, I'm actually training legs four times a week, but doing, like, separate muscle groups and only upper body once a week at the moment. But normally I do three leg days and two upper body days. And then I just do like on my rest days I kind of just take it easy do some stretching and things like that but it's so much nicer because on my rest days I would do hit and now I think that ain't that's not a rest day that's still still quite intense so now I've learned like it's so important to rest 100% and what does your food look like now food yeah love it like I'm eating the most of eating in my life and it's so nice because I think that I can just eat what I enjoy and and I, but another, something that was kind of still a struggle for me is going out to eat because when I was going through my recovery obviously all the restaurants were shut so I never was able to test that so going out to eat still a little bit like scary for me I'm not gonna lie but the more I do it the better it gets and the more obviously nothing bad happens um but it's just in that letting myself have things that I wouldn't have before like pasta now um like different nut butters it's just so nice to be able to have that. And because I'm eating a lot now, but like I'm eating from what I should for my body, it's just nice because now I'm thinking, now I'm like so much more focused on like, I need this fuel to feel strong rather than I need this to be skinny. Do you get what I mean? So true. And I, do you know what? It's so interesting that I think on this whole journey, we're always learning, right? And like, it's really interesting to hear you say, because I also recovered in lockdown. So you, it's really interesting to hear you say about how like going out to eat is a still, uh, whereas for me, because I've only sort of recently in the past 10 weeks gone back to the gym. Now it's like, you can't just eat what you want fr freely. Obviously I can, but it's like, I've got yeah. to be mindful in terms of recovery. And yeah. If I want to keep up this strength workout, if I want to, if I want to do like, if I want, cause I do, I fucking love the gym. I didn't get into it at seven, 16, 17. If I didn't love it, like yeah. in 14, 15, I was going to some of the workout classes. I've always been into the gym, Like I literally joined the gym at 14. So yeah. like it was, it was something that like now what I'm getting used to is the whole get going is sort of like fueling myself for the workouts yeah. rather than because I got so used to just being like oh yeah I just eat eat when I'm like sort of like when I'm hungry and stop when I fall like I got to such a good place with food and I've got like absolutely no fear foods whereas now it's like okay now I've sort of got to take my nutrition a bit more seriously if I do want to train yeah definitely and I think it's really important as well that I like is that you are still allowed to be into fitness and still allowed to be into I think a lot of people think that if you've struggled with disordered eating or struggled with over exercise in the past that you're not allowed to do it or and that's what really upsets me because it's like it's we've never like it's not that we've not enjoyed it it's just that we didn't have the right mindset and it's absolutely okay to change your mindset and still be into the gym and be into fitness and being do you know what I mean and still have a physique goal it's just about having the right mindset about it 100% and like I this is I'm so I'm really starting to notice it on Instagram and it's sort of like bugging me a little bit now I've had to mute a few people just because it's like na 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 I can still want to look good and look in the mirror and think fucking hell she looks good and I still want to go to the gym and like take pride in what I look like physically in terms of like strength goals. But the difference is now my goals are strength based and fueling myself. And my mindset is so different that I'm not just chasing skinny. And I'm also yeah. so aware that like, I'm happy as I am. 
Like that's yeah. whereas before I was only going to be happy if I hit a certain size. Yeah, so exactly. you can look good or strive to look good. You can go to the gym, you can eat healthy. Like if you don't want to eat brownies, you don't have to eat brownies. But if you do, you you can at the same time. Do you exactly. know what I mean? Whereas I feel like there's so much on social media at the moment. So many opinions like, and stuff like yeah, that. Like, oh, you still go to the gym and you used to have amenorrhea. Oh, like, and oh, you're yeah. kind of fully recovered then, are you? And it's like, nah, like, I have. Yeah. I just love it. It's crazy, yeah. Or even if, like, say, for instance, like, uh, like, I don't know, I'll go to a restaurant and I actually really just want a salad. Someone will think, oh, yeah, she clearly isn't recovered because she's having a salad. It's like, no, I still like that food. It's because the difference is now I have a choice whether, oh, I'll have a burger today. And, and you know what I mean? I've got a choice now, whereas before I'd be restrictive. But I still like that food. I still like having a structure. I still like nourishing my body. And I, I, I still don't eat a pizza every day. Like, I still like to be mindful and balanced. It's about that it's about having balance that is that is literally it isn't it balance um and, and like i think as well it's like i'm not going out to i'm not going to go out for food and and eat a burger every single time if i don't want the burger like i went out for breakfast uh with some guys that i work with and they were all having fry ups and stuff like that and i had avocado on toast and yeah. i had a few messages saying like where's your food ha ha and it's to be fair my portion was small but I always feel like avocado on toast compared to the fry ups always look small but I was a bit like but and and one comment in particular so like one of my friends messaged like where's your food ha 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 being vegan because I was still vegan at the time I've sort of transitioned out of it but anyway and she was like being vegan always gets a tough choice but like another girl messaged me like oh my god where's your food question mark question mark and it was like imp- I felt as if it was implying that I was like choosing that out of restriction and it was like yeah it's so frustrating actually, it is. what people didn't realize was that I got invited for breakfast last minute after I'd had breakfast yeah exactly and I do think as well like when you, someone else sees you eating someone say someone's eating a burger and you're eating like a healthier option it's like they they feel bad about themselves so they comment on you I don't know do you know what I mean or if they enjoy eating you know to you know yeah I still I like healthy it's as simple as that and some yeah I'm gonna have a burger and um but to be honest majority of the time I'm probably not because I, I know burgers don't make me feel good yeah, and I enjoy I enjoy wholesome food. They make me feel good. But I used to restrict the wholesome food. I used to just restrict food in general. But now I thrive off of wholesome foods, and I love it. Just because I eat wholesome foods every day does not mean I have an eating disorder. It just means that I love love nourishing my body. I love being healthy. But that isn't an eating disorder, and I think that's what people think. Like just because you're healthy and just because you have a structure, you go to the gym, it's like you have some obsession, and it's nothing like that. It's about finding balance. Hundred percent, mate. I love that. Absolutely love that. And I've loved this chat. Thank you. Yeah, so me much. too. It's so, so, it's so refreshing. I'm really starting to sort of like open. Like I had um, a chat with Vicky from Cleanly Bakes, who like tracks as well and like, into the gym and for her tracking really help. And do you know what? It's it feels as if it's just really nice to hear because it's it's like it's reassurance that I didn't have to completely turn my back on the gym do you know what I mean because it is yeah you love so yeah. yeah where can everyone find you um so on Instagram so Abby G Fitness oh Ab- um, Abby with the Y oh yeah that's important um if you are watching on YouTube please like and consider subscribing if you're on the podcast then please consider leaving a review and hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one bye